Hi everybody. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing all right today. Um, I just wanted to welcome everybody. My name's Cherie and um, I just wanted to make sure I wished you all a happy Thanksgiving. Um, it'll be coming up in a couple days and uh, remember to wear your stretchy pants. <laughs> Don't eat too much. Um, I wanted to do a devotional today, and although today isn't the 26th of November, it's the 21st when I'm filming this, um, but um, this one is on casting your anxiety, and I didn't want to wait on doing this because I know that I have trouble with anxiety all the time, and lately it seems like I've been having more trouble, I don't know why. Well, the holidays, I always have trouble on the holidays, seems like. And um, anyway, I know I'm not alone and um, just wanted to get on here and thought I would share this devotional with you all. I have not read it today yet. Uh, I just found it a minute ago. I actually was going to do the one for today, but something God led me to do this one. So um, I'm going to do this one today. Because, like I said, the holidays are coming up, and then it's going to be the pressure of all the holiday shopping and cooking and all that stuff. And, you know, it's just it's just a lot on people. And, um, anyway, just wanted to make sure that um, I covered this with you. I want to make sure you all got wished a happy Thanksgiving. I really appreciate your all's support throughout the year. I'm very thankful for each and every one of you. I've gotten some really nice happy mail. I got a birthday card from Carol and um, just got a lot of birthday wishes today. Today's my birthday and um, got a lot of birthday wishes and stuff and it mean a whole lot to me. Um, I just wanted to thank you for all my happy mail. I got a whole bunch the other day. It's very nice. I was just like a kid at Christmas. So I really want to thank you all for that. Um, but anyway, let me uh, see if I can get this camera a little closer in, excuse me, and I will see, I'm trying to find two on here, how can I get two, whoops, I'm sorry, hang on, <laughs> I'll make you seasick before I even get started, okay, that's pretty close, okay, I'm sorry, okay, here we go, all right, um, this is out of this devotional. over here. All right, here we go. Casting your anxiety. And I marked this verses in my Bible. It's out of 1 P Peter 5, 6, and 7. It says, Humble yourselves under the mighty power of God, and at the right time he will lift you up in honor. Give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. It says, responding to God's invitation to cast our worries on Him takes a good deal of humility. When people can handle things by themselves and have experienced a high degree of success, they can easily become prideful. But humbling ourselves can be very freeing to our souls. The flip side is this. If we don't follow the advice in today's verses, we can become too burdened down to press on in our calling. God wants us to soar like the eagles and run without fainting, but we won't have the spiritual or physical energy to do this if we're carrying a 50-pound burden of worry on our backs. Carol came out of an abusive marriage a number of years ago and was left with no money. Fearful and anxious, she was constantly in crisis management mode. She worried the tires were going to fall off of her old car. She dreaded the first of the month, afraid that she couldn't pay her bills. And when she heard sirens, she feared her teenage daughter had been in a wreck. Finally, exhausted and at the end of her rope, Carol cried out to God and slowly realized that he wanted her to give her worries and cares to him because he loved and cared deeply about her, deeply. She began to roll her burdens onto God in prayer. And, as she did, her energy was renewed, 
She started her own business and eventually was able to support herself and her daughter, send her daughter to college, and even help others. You and I are given the same invitation today from God who holds all power and authority. Cast all your worries and cares upon the one who promises to care for you. Lord, I am prone to be anxious with the unbearable weight of myself and my problems. Yet your word says you don't want your children to be anxious about anything, but to pray about everything. Grant me deep humility and renewed dependence on you to do this day by day. And it says, talk to God in prayer of all your wants, your troubles, even of the weariness you feel in serving him. You cannot speak too freely, too trust, trustfully to him. And, you know, that's true. It, uh, it is humbling to put your troubles before God. To um, admit, I guess really, that you're turning what control you think you have over to God. Because He has the control anyway. We just don't want to let go of it. We don't want to show that we're human. We don't have no control over any. God is in control. And we just need to realize that um, we just need to turn it over to Him. He knows what's best. He has a plan for us. Um, you know, it's, it's all in His hands. And we need to let Him know that we trust Him, we have faith in Him, and that no matter what, we know that he has what's best for us in his heart. And uh, and we just need to leave it at that. I mean, um, be sweet chance, my hand's getting tired. Um, yeah. Um, it's hard when you have anxiety and depression and stuff. And I'm no doctor. <laughs> but just speaking from experience, you know, we can't do it all alone. And... Uh, we need God, and we need for God to know that we trust Him, and we have faith that what He says and does is what's best for us. And, um, you know, he, he puts people in our paths and knows, you know, what we need. Oh, excuse me. I got off the phone. I did it off the phone. <laughs> um, he knows what we need, and uh, it can even be through people. Um, I'll tell you a little story. Yeah, well, yeah, I'll tell it to you. Uh, yeah, I'll tell it to you. Um, no, I'm not going to tell it to you. I'll tell it to you another time. I'm not sure if I should or not. Um, okay, we were out eating the other day, okay? Um, I don't know if this really goes with the anxiety theme. That's why I'm hesitating, but... I think I need to share this with you all. And um, we were eating out the other day. Uh, we went to um, a roadhouse here, uh, not far from us. <coughs> I love to go there and eat. And when we go, we sit at the bar. Yes, at the bar. For one thing, I can get in and out of those seats at the bar. I'm a tall girl. And I can get in and out of those seats at the bar a lot easier than I can try to get up out of a booth or a table. And we sit at the bar. I watch the videos, you know, the country music videos. I, I enjoy watching the old Alan Jackson ones and stuff. And um, I do not drink. I drink tea or pop, water. Uh, most of the time when you see me there, if you see me there, you will see me doing that. Once in a blue moon, I might have in the summertime a little blue drink or something because it's so pretty. But I don't think one drink's going to hurt somebody if you know you're not going to be, uh, make a habit out of it. You know what I mean, turn into an alcoholic. That's wrong. Drunkenness is wrong. In my opinion, uh, a drink every now and then is not bad. <laughs> 
But also, I like to sit there because I don't get to see a lot of people. I'm retired and, you know, we just don't do much. And we get to meet a lot of people sitting there at that bar. And every time, just about every time, I meet someone that touches my life, or hopefully I touch theirs, um, and everybody sitting there does not drink, okay? This lady that I'm talking about, um, that I'm going to tell you about, she had coffee. She wanted a cup of coffee. So, one point of this is when you see people sitting at a bar at a restaurant, don't be so judgy-judgy. That doesn't mean they're alcoholics. That doesn't even mean they're drinking. I, I sat there the other day and looked around. Two people, three people out of everybody sitting there was drinking. And they were just having little drinks. It wasn't, they weren't drunk or anything. It's ridiculous. No. They were just having a social drink. And everybody else was drinking Diet Pop, mostly. Uh, I had sweet tea. But most everybody else, I looked, and they were drinking Diet Pop. Men drinking Diet Pop. Having a good meal at the bar. And, you know, a lot of them were older people, and I think they sit there the right reason I do. They can get up out of them seats easier. And you get to meet people and socialize a little bit. And you can watch the videos, and, you know, you get waited on quicker. You know, I mean, it's just it's the way we are. And uh, anyway, there was a lady sitting next to Oscar. And um, I was sitting here. My dad was sitting here. I was sitting here. Oscar was sitting in the corner the lady and her husband well we just got to talking back and forth about you know where they were from and everything and she was pretty and she had short hair and she had really pretty big glasses on um she's just a pretty lady and we talked for quite a while uh got to know them and, and they were so nice and she had a cross necklace on i had a cross necklace on and um, like i said she was drinking coffee but anyway, as we got to know her, she was just so sweet. And I looked at her and I said, you're so pretty. I said, I love your glasses. I said, you could just be a model. And she said, well, she said, to be honest with you, she, she says, I've been having, uh, I've had ca I've had cancer. I have cancer. I went through my chemo and stuff. I've had 60 chemo treatments, I think she said. And it just took me aback because I had no idea. And I thought, oh, gosh, <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> and... Um, we had been talking about church while we were sitting there, and we told her we used to sing in church and stuff. And um, anyway, um, I said, "I'm so sorry. I, we will pray for you that you get better." And she talked about she had a, a daughter in high school and things, and uh, played sports and stuff. And um, I mean, it was just a very touching story. And she said, "I felt like God has put me here at this bar with you all today." And I said, I felt the same way. And Oscar said, I felt like when you sat down here that there was something about you and your story that was going to touch us. And he said, I guess that was it, you know. And you know, her husband was sitting next to her, and I could tell he was getting a little upset because, um, you know, he knew that maybe her outcome wasn't going to be the best. We're not sure. You know, nobody knows but God. But she's been through it a lot, but she's not quitting. She's doing it for her daughter and her husband and everybody, too. <laughs> but anyway, I thought, oh, gosh, I'm going to start crying. I cannot cry in front of her. I do not want to bring her down. She's being so brave. And I don't want to sit here being a big crybaby because I am. <laughs> and Oscar said, honey, I'm so sorry. He said, he looked at her husband. He said, do you mind if I give your wife a little hug? And he said, no, I don't mind. And he hugged her, and he said, I'm, I'm so sorry. You know, we'll be praying for you and stuff. And, you know, you, I can tell you're tough and stuff. Well, as he was talking to her, I seen her husband reach over and grab some napkins on the bar. And he turned his head away from her, and he was wiping his eyes. And when I seen him do that, I thought, oh, no, I'm going to start crying. So I reached over and got some napkins, too, and her husband when he reached over and got the napkins and daubed his eyes and turned away from me, he, he said, I'm going to go outside. So he went out back to smoke. And so when he did that, I grabbed napkins and I said, I'm going to go to the bathroom. And I just went right behind him. I, mean, I was on his heels because the bathrooms are that direction too. And I followed him outside. And I said, I'm sorry. I said, I'm coming out here with you because I was didn't want to cry in front of your wife. And I, was, I know I was going to. I said, love girls' hearts. I'm so sorry. 
and he's you know he said you know it might be going good it might not you know we don't know um i said well i'm so sorry well i'm standing out there crying with him and people were <laughs> leaving out back with their orders here i am crying he's kind of trying to keep it together and i said stupid cancer you know and um anyway i, I finally got straightened out some but i said i did not want to cry in front of her and I had to stay out back a little bit because my eyes were red, you know, and I thought, oh, how am I going to pull this off? And uh, I had been trying to get Oscar to leave, and he was still sitting there. And anyway, we were out back, and he said, are you okay now? And I said, yeah, I think I am. And so me and her husband went back inside and uh, walked around, you know, behind him. And I walked over toward my chair and I just kind of kicked Oscar's stool, and I said, come on, we got to go. And he goes, well, I guess we better be going, you know. And I gave her a little sideways hug because I didn't want her to see me. And um, anyway, we, uh, I paid for their dinner. I snuck and paid for that before we even went outside. God told me I needed to do that, and I did. Uh, I never, uh, you know, we left. Uh, they were still sitting there. But anyway, we finally got to the car, and we got to the car. I just started bawling. And Oscar's like, what's wrong? And I said, oh, I just couldn't hold it together no more in there, Oscar. I, it's so sad. And it was so sad. It was just a sad story. And I just felt so bad for them. And I haven't seen them anymore uh, since then. We've been back a time or two. But um, they work, you know, and they have children and stuff. And we... We just happened to see them that day in there, and I believe God put them in my path and us in theirs. I think it was meant for us to sit there. But, you know, we could witness about God while we were sitting there at a bar in a restaurant witnessing our testimonies to each other. I'm telling you folks, don't be so judgy, judgy, because you're missing out on a lot of blessings by being that way. Now, I'm not saying when you go to the restaurant, sit at the bar. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying, if you see people going through something, be there to help. Don't just judge and sit on the sidelines. We were there the other day, a few days ago. We always get my dad usually, and uh, dad, uh, I had Oscar, dad, and me, this time sitting on this side of the corner of the bar. And there was an older, well, he wasn't that old. He's probably in his 60s, maybe 70s, maybe. Anyway, I'm guessing 60s. Um, but anyway, he was sitting down here by himself, you know, and he was eating. And, you know, we were just kind of exchanging pleasantries all of us. You know, hi, how you doing? And different things like that. And anyway, um, he finished his meal. He drank Diet Coke. man over here on this side, Diet Coke. The guy sitting beside me was drinking beer. But he was very nice. Um, but anyway, the fellow over here, um, when he got done eating, got his bill, he asked for... Um, uh, their bread there, their rolls are very good, and he asked for a box of rolls to go. And he said, my mom is in a nursing home, and he said, she doesn't eat very good, but she loves the rolls here, so I always take her a basket or box of rolls. And I said, oh, and she's, he said, I lost my dad a few months ago or so, I believe he said, and I said, oh, I'm so sorry. And he said, uh, he said, yeah, he said, um, and they were raising my, I think he said 12-year-old nephew, I believe is what he said, or his a grandchild or something. Uh, but anyway, he said, now I'm taking care of him. He said, so Thanksgiving, we are going to cook dinner, just me and him. He said, so it should, should be an experience because I've never done that before. And I thought, oh, my goodness. I said, how brave you are. And he said, yeah, I said, well, just take your time and just make a memory and make fun out, fun of it, you know. And he said, that's what we're going to do. We're going to have a good time, and he and I are going to fix our Thanksgiving dinner, a <laughs> 12-year-old and him. And I thought, how brave and how cute is that? And so we told him, you know, happy Thanksgiving. We hoped everything went all right and everything with his mom and stuff and with his dinner. And that was really nice. And he, you know, shook our hands or said thank you, you know, when he was leaving and you know, it, you can meet people everywhere you go, whether it's out shopping or eating or whatever. You know, you can get to know people. And don't be so judgy on where it is you're meeting them or who you see sitting where in a restaurant because that doesn't mean anything. You know, if you can't judge because we're all not perfect. 
And just because people are sitting at a bar or at a restaurant does not mean they're terrible people. Okay, so just put your nose down because get it up out of the air because nobody's better than anybody else, okay? And maybe we need to help people more than talk about them. That's my little high horse speech for the day. But um, I will tell you that one time we went and I had my... Uh, 13 or 14 year old granddaughter with me and we sat at the bar and we sat her with us well I had tea she had tea several people around the bar women men were drinking soft drinks and stuff and we were all you know talking you can tell everybody's talking having a good time watching videos on the TV and stuff and the ball games and stuff that was on and you know I told her I said uh, we are sitting here on purpose because I want you to know when you get older when you sit like at the bar here or with your friends that you can have fun and you do not have to drink to have fun you don't have to have a drink to have a good time you can have a soft drink and be just as fine as anybody else at a table or a booth over there in that restaurant but you need to know that just because you sit at a bar doesn't mean you have to drink because look at all these people here look at all these women they're dressed nice they're dressed down they're you know in jeans uh, whatever they're with their husbands their boyfriends just their friends and they're having a good time and they're not you know they're not being rowdy they're not drinking they're drinking diet coke or whatever you know tea coffee you know just because you're sitting at a bar does not mean that you have to drink or anything like that be nice be yourself be kind you know uh, just enjoy yourself but you can do it without drinking and I wanted you to know that because there's such a stigma <clears throat> on people that drink and sit at bars and things like that sit at the bar now I'm not talking about going to a bar I'm talking about at a restaurant at a bar is where we took her it was the roadhouse but she got to see that she's not just hearing one side of the story Oh, don't sit at the bar. Oh, look at those people at the bar. You know, they're all a bunch of drunks over there. No, they're not. You can sit here and drink pop and have a good time. You're coherent. You're not drunk. You know exactly what's going on. You can drive home. You know, you're remembering your good time. And so will all these people sitting here, you know? So I wanted her to know if she goes somewhere with her friends, she don't have to drink to have a good time just because one or two of them might that's their business but don't be a part of it don't be riding around with them don't drive around with them because that's dangerous if they've been drinking too much just know that you can be there and be a friend and have a good time and you don't have to drink to do it none of you all do all your friends can sit there and drink diet coke and be happy as little larks but i wanted her to see the other side of the story because it gets to be so taboo that they think they have to drink when they sit there because it's all they've learned. Well, no, you don't. Look around. Everybody's not drinking that's sitting here. And it's like that every time that we go there or any restaurant. You know, if you see us in a restaurant, odds are we're going to be sitting at the bar for the reasons that I told you. And, uh, you know, you get to talk to the waiter. You get to meet them, the bartender, whatever. You get to know them. It's just a real good atmosphere for that. And if you're a people person especially, it's a good thing to do. But, yeah, you know, I just wanted to share that with you because um, I just, for everybody, I'd like to pray for that lady. And the people that I mentioned today, the man with his grandson cooking on Thanksgiving and, and the lady that I was talking about that has the cancer, just pray for people because we all need it, you know. We've all got stuff we're going through. And I um, just wanted to put that out there that we can make a difference and people can make a difference in our lives anywhere that we are. You know, we can be waiting on a prescription. We can be in a line at the Walmart or somewhere, or the grocery store. It don't matter. You know, it, you just get to meet people. 
and that's good. People can still be nice to each other. So anyway, if you've got a lot of anxiety and um, the holidays and things coming up, just remember to give it to God. Give it to God because He will take care of you. He will. Um, he'll be there for you. You're never alone. Know that you're never alone. Um, you know, we don't know what other people are going through. We can live with them and not know what they're going through. But um, I just wanted you all to know that <clears throat> people's going through stuff, especially around the holidays. They might be missing their loved ones. I know I miss my mom a lot. She's been gone four years uh, the other day, and it's hard. Um, but we muddle through. You know, Oscar's lost a sister and two brothers. One the other, about a week ago, he lost a brother. About a few months ago or so, he lost another brother. And the first part of the year, he lost a sister. So he's lost a sister and two brothers just this year. And two of them recently. And it's hard, you know, especially around the holidays. But just pray God uh, pray to God to stay with you and get you through the hard times, and He will. But remember, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bring you all down, but I just wanted you all to know, um, you know, there's enough going on with this world without the negativity all the time. And remember to live, love, laugh, and laugh some more, because laughter's the best medicine, no matter what we go through. Laughter is the best medicine. And I hope you all have a great Thanksgiving. Uh, we're going out to eat. I'm not going to cook. We're going out to eat. There's some restaurants open this year, and we're going to hopefully take advantage of that. And um, anyway, I'm not going to cook. I have been cooking turkey and uh, turkey breast, actually, turkey breast in the crock pot lately. And I tell you what, it is really good, folks. I put the turkey breast in the crock pot, and I just put a little bit of water in the bottom, just enough to cover the bottom of the crock pot. I mean, just a little bit of water. And I turn it on high. And um, um, cook it for probably six hours, four to six. You just have to check it, make sure you get it done. But I tell you, by the time it's done, there's about that much liquid in the from the juices and stuff in the turkey that's in the crock pot. It's so good and juicy. I tell you, that's the only way I'll make a turkey breast from now on. Now, I don't make a whole turkey. This is turkey breast. It is so good. And where it's in that crock pot, those juices just stay on that turkey. It's not like in a baking pan where they just disperse all over the pan. This is in that crock pot. Oh, it's so good. And this turkey came with a little gravy packet, and I made that. It was good. And Oscar peeled potatoes and made mashed potatoes. And we did a little thing of baked beans. That was the best ever. I swear it was the best meal ever. That I make a turkey breast probably once a week or every other week. Uh, we feed it to the, uh, Gizmo and Bella too. Um, I don't put a lot of seasonings on it. I put some, but not a lot. So they won't be affected by it. And uh, anyway, that's just my little tidbit for the information for your holiday. If you want to do a turkey breast, a crock pot's the way to go. You can Google it and get the recipes and all the ifs, ands, and buts about it. But, yeah, that's uh, pretty cool. Well, I won't keep you. I definitely didn't want to be on here this long. Um, I hadn't planned on sharing those stories, but God told me to, I guess. It was on my heart, too. So, anyway, I just thank the world of you all, and I hope you all have a great Thanksgiving. And I'll try to get back on here as soon as I can. And... Um, you all take care. Have a great Thanksgiving. Bye-bye.